In this episode, we're going to take another look at cleaning up your dialog audio, this time using Adobe Audition CC. And instead of using the noise remover effect, we're going to use the sound remover effect, which you wouldn't necessarily know there's a difference, but one is actually more effective than the other. Check this out. In our last episode, we looked at an audio clip and removed some noise from it. And in this case, uh, I was a lot entirely pleased with the, the particular effect. So again, we came up here to effects, noise reduction, and we used this noise reduction effect. And it did a pretty good job of removing the noise, but it also seemed to impart a little bit of a kind of a reverb sound, processed sound, and it wasn't a great reverb. So I played around a little bit more to see if I could find a better way to do this. And it turns out that there's also this sound remover effect within Adobe Audition CC. I don't know if it's new in this version. I think it might be, I'm not positive, but this is an amazing effect and does some pretty impressive things. And I think it does a better job, even in this particular case, cleaning up the noise and uh, processing the audio. So let me just run through real quickly what I did here. So again, we're gonna go ahead and break this down into mono tracks. We don't need both of them. And then just like before, we're gonna go ahead and normalize that by selecting all, going up to favorites and normalize to minus 0.1 dB to get us our max sound, okay? So I'm gonna come here to this end section. Don't go too crazy, bring that over. Okay, here's our last section. Let me go ahead and play this for you just as a reminder. Again, there's a whining noise, but there's also a clicking noise. So just kind of keep your ear for open for that. This much is true. Okay, so there were a couple things there. Um, there was this clicking noise, there's the whining noise, and then there's also this clicking noise at the end. So let's go ahead and t tell the uh, audition to go ahead and learn that sound model. So again, we just like before we come up here to effects, noise reduction, learn sound model. Okay, so it captured that. So now we can go ahead and deselect that, and then let's come back up here, noise reduction, and choose the sound remover. Okay, so we've got uh, this, the same waveform down here. It looks pretty good. It looks like it cleaned up all that noise here that you see up on the top. It also seemed to be doing a pretty good job getting rid of this click and this click at here at the end. Let's listen to it and see how it sounds. This much is true. Okay, um, it did a good job cleaning up the noise, but it gave our poor talent a little bit of a lisp and it doesn't sound awesome. So let's go in here and kind of fine tune these settings and get to a point where it sounds much more natural. Now, the default setting here is to enhance for speech. Since we're doing dialogue, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. And I think that's the right setting in this case. Now there are two main sections up here. There's the sound model or the sound section and the content section. Now, keep in mind, this is the sound remover. So the two pieces are the sound we wanna remove, that's represented up in these settings up here, and then there's the content we wanna keep. This is gonna be our dialogue. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and see if there's a way we can clean this up. Now, the sound complexity and the sound refinement passes, it seemed to do a pretty good job removing our sound. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about that yet, what it messed up was our content. It kind of gave our, again, our actor or talent a little bit of a lisp. So we're gonna tell it that the complexity of this content's a little higher. Let's pop that up to 30. And then let's tell the content refinement passes to go 100 times. And what happens, you'll notice when I do that, it has to go through and reprocess the audio. So once it's done with that, let's go ahead and play it back and see how it sounds. This much is true. Awesome. So that was all we needed to do to clean clean the dialogue back up and get it sounding natural again and to get rid of the sound. So pretty straightforward. Now again, if you're having trouble, if it's not removing all the sound, you want to kind of tweak these settings up here. If it's muddling up your content, the stuff you want to keep, then you want to play with these settings here and, and uh, just kind of, I guess you have to kind of play around. Again, our content wasn't horribly complex. We could bump that up some more and see what happens. Let's bump that up to 60 this time and run through it again, see if it makes any difference. This much is true. It didn't really seem to make much difference, so I don't think we're, we're dealing with a really super complex content, um, but improving the, or increasing the content refinement passes to a 100 really seemed to kind of clean things up. So we're pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that just like last time. It processes the whole audio clip 
and let's go ahead and shrink it back down again. Now, just like before, we could go ahead and throw on those other effects here in the effects rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the EQ just like before. We'll go back to our default setting. And again, I'll run, in, I'll run through this in more detail in a future episode, but I wanna cut off this, uh, the low frequency, any sort of rumble or hum or anything we've got down there. I usually come in here just to kind of bring out the, the bass and, and men's voices in particular, come and kind of cut some of this out. Let's see what that sounds like now. You introduced me to a life that I've never known. Okay, now the, on, the, on that you got to be kind of careful. You don't want to cut too far because when you start cutting too far, you're going to lose some of the clarity or the intelligibility of the voice. Um, so it's kind of a fine tuning and you could, you know, kind of play around with that. Also, again, the room is a little bit funky sounding, a little honky sounding. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a cut in this 200 range. And again, we played around with that. When I'm by your side, that's when I'm feeling at home. And my only attempt is to make you smile. I promise. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and leave that there. Again, we'll come back and do more detail on that in the future. And then toss this mastering on as well. And again, typically I'm going to add a little bit of exciter since we did a cut there to bring the bass out. We also want to make sure we, we keep some of that intelligibility. And that just adds a little kind of shimmer to the top end. And then our loudness. loudness. So believe what I say when I say I'm real. There ain't nothing, no mistake in the way I feel. Okay, so we brought that up and that kind of gets us into this right range here where we're peaking at minus, minus one or minus two, somewhere in there. And so that's pretty much uh, how we get to where we want to go. We go ahead and apply that. And there's our final audio we could bring back with our video and be in much better shape. Now, again, since this was a rescue, it's not perfect. There is still some noise in there you can see especially after we added that mastering, the loudness maximizer. We do still have some noise in there. Um, in this particular case, since it's a wedding video, what I would probably do is just put some quiet music in the backdrop or background. And that'll tend to cover up a little bit of that noise. Again, it's a trick you can't always use because you don't always want music in the background, but in this case, I might do something like that and that would do a nice job cleaning it up and getting us kind of a nice finished product. So again, I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave comments and questions down below and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already to get more great tips on improving your sound and your lighting for video. Talk to you soon.